the Greek serial killer nun, Vertical Bar, How She Got Caught. Join me as I uncover the chilling story of the Greek serial killer nun and how she was finally brought to justice. Introduction Unveiling the depths of deception religion, a cornerstone of human experience has profoundly shaped societies throughout history. But within the sanctity of faith, darkness can lurk. The story of Mariam Sulakiotis, the mother Rasputin of Greece, exposes a chilling tale of manipulation, murder, and the horrific exploitation of faith. This article delves into the life of Sulakiotis, the inner workings of the Karatea convent she controlled, and the events that ultimately brought her crimes to light. Part 1. A Life Shrouded in Ambiguity The early years of Mariam Sulakiotis Mariam Sulakiotis' early life remains shrouded in obscurity. Born sometime in the late 19th century, details about her family background and upbringing are scarce. Historical accounts suggest she likely came from an impoverished Greek family, working in manual labor on farms and factories. Little is known about her education or religious beliefs before her fateful encounter with Father Matthew Karpathakis. The Spark of Deception Entering the World of the Old Calendarists The year 1920 marked a turning point in Sulakiotis's life. She met Father Matthew, a monk within the Greek Old Calendarist Church, a branch of Eastern Orthodoxy that rejected reforms implemented in the early 20th century. Father Matthew was disillusioned with the old calendarist doctrines and had ambitions of forming his own religious sect. So Lachiotis, likely drawn to his charismatic personality or seeking a new purpose, became his devoted follower. A Rift Within Orthodoxy, the birth of the new calendarist sect, Father Matthew's descent led him to establish a breakaway sect, the New Calendarists. This new group embraced the recent reforms of the Orthodox Church, further distancing themselves from the old calendarist traditions. To solidify his authority, Father Matthew built a convent and monastery in Karatea, a remote village southeast of Athens. So Lachiotis, displaying a growing ambition, actively participated in the development of this new religious center. Part 2. From Devout Follower to Ruthless Leader the rise of Mother Superior Mariam Father Matthew's health deteriorated throughout the 1930s, placing increasing responsibility on Solakiotis' shoulders. Her strong personality and ruthless demeanor made her a natural fit for a leadership position. By 1939, upon Father Matthew's death, Solakiotis was officially appointed abbess, the head of the Karatea convent. This marked the beginning of a reign of terror that would span over a decade. A Facade of Piety the allure and control mechanisms of the Karatea Convent. The Karatea Convent, under Solakiotis's leadership, outwardly presented itself as a haven of devotion. It was purportedly dedicated to the Virgin Mary, attracting new members seeking spiritual solace. However, a sinister truth lay beneath this pious facade. So Lachiotis, a master manipulator, employed various tactics to exert control over her followers. Targeting the vulnerable. So Lachiotis's manipulative tactics were particularly effective on vulnerable populations. She preyed on wealthy families, promising them spiritual guidance and a path to salvation. These families, often lured by the convent's idyllic setting, were pressured to relinquish their wealth under the guise of a vow of poverty. Isolation from the outside world. A key element of Solakiotis's control was the isolation she imposed on her followers. New members were cut off from contact with their families and friends, creating a dependency on the convent as their sole source of social interaction. This isolation effectively silenced potential dissent and prevented news of the convent's dark secrets from leaking out, exploiting religious fervor. So Lachiotis weaponized religious fervor to manipulate her followers. She established strict rules demanding long hours of prayer, rigorous fasting, and unquestioning obedience. Any deviation from these rules was met with harsh punishments, further solidifying her control. Part 3. A Descent into Barbarity – The Horrific Realities of the Karatea Convent 
Behind the facade of pious devotion, the Karatea convent became a place of unimaginable suffering. Sulakiotis employed brutal methods to extract wealth and maintain control over her followers. Torture and abuse. Sulakiotis implemented a regime of physical and psychological abuse. Sleep deprivation, food rationing, and corporal punishment were commonplace. Those deemed disobedient were subjected to torture, including beatings and confinement. This relentless cruelty served a dual purpose. It instilled fear and obedience in the convent's residents, while simultaneously weakening them physically and mentally, making them even more susceptible to Solakiotis's manipulation. The specific methods of torture employed by Solakiotis remain unclear, but witness testimonies point towards whippings, confinement in cramped and dark spaces, and the deliberate infliction of pain through various means. Exploiting the Vulnerable Seeking Medical Attention The Karatea Convent's location at a high altitude presented Solakiotis with a particularly cruel opportunity. At the time, tuberculosis TB was a rampant disease, and Sulakiotis falsely advertised the convent as a sanatorium offering a cure due to the clean mountain air. Desperate individuals, particularly those from poorer backgrounds, were lured in with the promise of healing. However, upon arrival, they found themselves trapped in a nightmarish situation. Instead of receiving medical care, they were subjected to the same brutal treatment as other followers, their desperation exploited for financial gain. Many of these individuals ultimately succumbed to their illnesses, further adding to the body count within the convent walls. Financial Exploitation Sulakiotis's primary motive appears to have been greed. She devised various methods to siphon wealth from her followers, forced donations and vows of poverty. As mentioned earlier, New members were pressured to surrender their possessions and wealth upon entering the convent. This vow of poverty enriched Solakiotis in the convent while leaving the followers entirely dependent on her for their basic needs, extortion and blackmail. Solakiotis exploited the vulnerabilities of her followers, particularly those with families and assets outside the convent. She threatened to reveal their sins or harm their loved ones if they did not comply with her demands for additional financial contributions. Labor Exploitation The convent residents were forced to work long hours on the convent's grounds, tending to crops, raising livestock, and performing various maintenance tasks. This essentially free labor further enriched Sulakiotis and the convent. Part 4. A Web of Lies Begins to Unravel the road to justice. Despite Solakiotis's efforts to control information flow, rumors of the horrors within the Karatea convent began to circulate in the late 1940s. Whispers of screams emanating from the convent at night, coupled with the disappearance of individuals who had entered its walls, eventually reached the ears of the authorities. The Catalyst for Investigation the turning point came in 1949 when the daughter of a recent convert reported suspicious activity. Her mother, upon joining the convent, had inexplicably signed over the deeds to her land to Mother Superior Mariam. This uncharacteristic behavior sparked alarm in the daughter, prompting her to contact the police. The raid and shocking discoveries. Finally, on December 4, 1950, authorities launched a large-scale raid on the Karatea convent. The scene that greeted them was horrifying. Eighty-five police officers spent two days scouring the grounds, uncovering a hidden world of suffering. They found survivors, malnourished and traumatized individuals, including 46 children, were discovered hidden within the convent. Many elderly residents were found in a state of neglect and deprivation. Mass graves. A horrifying discovery awaited the officers a mass grave containing the remains of over 170 individuals. The exact cause of death for many of these victims remains unknown, although some were likely victims of disease and malnutrition exacerbated by Solakiotis's cruelty. Others bore clear signs of violence, suggesting they were murdered. Evidence of Financial Gain The raid also unearthed a substantial amount of financial resources within the convent. 
large sums of cash, along with deeds to properties and farms, were found in Solakiotis's possession. This incriminating evidence provided a clear link between her exploitative practices and her personal wealth accumulation. Part 5. A Flawed Justice System Trials and Inconclusive Outcomes The raid on the Karatea convent exposed Sulakiotis' crimes to the public eye. Newspapers dubbed her Mother Rasputin, drawing a parallel to the notorious Grigory Rasputin, a manipulative figure who wielded undue influence over the Russian royal family. However, the path to justice for Sulakiotis's victims proved to be long and frustrating. The first trial and missed opportunities. Solakiotis's first trial, held in September 1951, focused primarily on financial irregularities. Prosecutors believed they had a stronger case on charges of illegal business activities, such as Sulakiotis's involvement in unauthorized tire imports and olive oil exports. Astonishingly, despite the overwhelming evidence of abuse and the discovery of mass graves, Sue Lakiotis faced no charges related to the deaths or mistreatment of her followers. The court found her guilty only on the minor charges of illegal business activities, sentencing her to a mere 26 months in prison. This miscarriage of justice sparked public outrage and a renewed determination to hold Sue Lakiotis accountable for her more heinous crimes. Mounting Public Pressure in a Second Trial the public outcry and media pressure following the first trial forced authorities to reopen the investigation. New witnesses came forward, detailing the horrific treatment they endured within the convent walls. Based on this new testimony, Sulakiotis faced a second trial in February 1953. This time, the charges were more severe, including murder. Prosecutors charged Sulakiotis with the murders of a monk, three nuns, and potentially more. The exact number of victims by her hand remains unknown. Embezzlement. The vast amount of wealth discovered at the convent served as evidence of Solakiotis's misappropriation of funds from her followers. Abuse and torture. The testimonies of survivors provided a harrowing account of the physical and psychological abuse they suffered under Solakiotis's reign. A second conviction. But still no closure. The second trial resulted in a 10-year prison sentence for Solakiotis to be served concurrently with her first sentence. While this marked a step towards justice, it fell short of the retribution many felt Solakiotis deserved. The question of the exact number of lives she claimed also remained unanswered. Estimates ranged from 100 to 500 deaths, a horrifying testament to the brutality of her regime. A bizarre third trial and lingering questions. In a further twist of events, Sulaki Otis faced a third trial shortly after her second sentencing. The charges in this trial were unrelated to the convent atrocities and instead focused on illegal detention. She was found guilty and received an additional four-year prison sentence. An enduring mystery, motives and why followers remained. Loyal Sulakiotis died in prison in 1954, maintaining her innocence to the very end. Her motives for such horrific acts remain unclear. Was she a true believer who twisted religious ideology to serve her own greed? Or was she a cunning opportunist who exploited the piety of others for personal gain? These questions continue to intrigue researchers and true crime enthusiasts to this day. Perhaps even more perplexing is the continued loyalty some followers displayed towards Saulakiotis. Even after her crimes were exposed, some remained convinced of her innocence. Reports suggest that young women interested in joining the convent mysteriously vanished after Sulakiotis's downfall, hinting at a possible continuation of her exploitative practices under new leadership. Part 6 the Legacy of the Karatea Convent, a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked authority. The Karatea Convent tragedy serves as a chilling reminder of the devastating consequences that can occur when religious authority goes unchecked. So Lachiotis' story exposes the vulnerability of those seeking spiritual solace and the ease with which manipulative individuals can exploit faith for personal gain. The Convent's Uncertain Fate 
the Karatea convent itself continues to operate today, though under new leadership. Whether the institution has truly reformed or remains haunted by its dark past is a matter of speculation. A call for vigilance. The story of Mariam Sulakiotis is a stark call for vigilance against religious extremism and abuse of power. It is a reminder of the importance of critical thinking and the necessity for religious institutions to operate with transparency and accountability. While the exact details surrounding the Karatea convent tragedy may remain shrouded in some mystery, its impact on Greek society and the broader understanding of religious manipulation continues to be felt today. The story of Mariam Sulakiotis serves as a cautionary tale, urging us to remain vigilant against those who exploit faith for their own twisted purposes. Thanks so much for tuning in today, friends. We hope you enjoyed our discussion. If there's anyone special you'd love us to delve into next time, drop their name in the comments below. We're always eager to hear your thoughts, so don't hesitate to share them. And remember, your support means the world to us, so go ahead, give that like button a smash, hit subscribe, and spread the word by sharing this video with your circle. Until we meet again, keep the curiosity alive. With love, the Midnight Society.